Previously in this course, we talked about doing a pump down. When we have a running operating system, we simply close the liquid valve and the refrigerant starts backing up through the liquid line and starts filling up in the condensing coil. The compressor pulls the low pressure vapor and all the refrigerant out of the evaporator coil and the line sets or the majority of the refrigerant and pumps it all into the condensing unit. We'd shut the unit off and then we'd close down the suction valve and the majority of the refrigerant was here. We're still supposed to recover that last little bit of refrigerant here that's only vapor, but it doesn't take very long because it's just a small amount of vapor, very little oil involved, so it recovers very quickly. Now, if we're doing a change out, we would then want to do that as quick as possible. We'd cut these lines and we'd take this piece of equipment and move it out of the way. From there, we have two different mindsets. Some like to take this back to the shop with all the refrigerant stored inside and let somebody else do the recovery, do it on a slow day, or maybe the recycler is going to do it. Other people like to recover it while it's still at the job. Me personally, I like to recover while I'm still at the job. So I'm already doing a whole bunch of other work. I already have my recovery machine extension cord set up. But either way, when we do that step, we don't have access to the refrigerant inside this condensing unit like we did before. When we close these valves off, it separates this side from this side and this side from this side. And our Schrader port, where we hook our gauges and our hoses to, are connected to this side when these valves are closed. So if we're gonna to try to do recovery, we wouldn't be able to use these ports as they sit. So we have several different options. The modern and newest method, and the one I'd recommend the most would be this method here. We talked before about these quick connects, and there's a little tool where you can disconnect and reuse these. What I would do was take a piece of copper on the other side, braze on a little service port to where we have our gauges can hooked up, and this is one for 3 8 and I could just simply slide this right onto that existing 3 8 connection, and that would open this valve back up, and I could start recovering it. You get two more sizes, do another one for 3 quarter inch copper and another one for 7 8 copper, and you could simply slide this connection onto two different sizes and recover from both sides. It's a nice, quick way of doing it, and it's fairly inexpensive overall. In the old days, to make that same thing happen, we would have to pinch this closed with some type of pliers, braze that connection closed, and then open the valves and then start recovering. So you can see without having to do the torch side of it, this tool makes it a whole lot faster. But this little tool, these little fittings are fairly new to refrigeration. So in the older days, we had two different options. The first option was called a line tap. So what this would do would tap into that copper line. And we tapped into that copper line, we could just tap on this side and start pulling the refrigerant. Here in a little bit, we'll show you how that tool works. But it took a little while because we had all these little pieces to deal with, these little Allen wrenches, we had to puncture the line, and it was quite cumbersome. So what I used to do was I had this tool right here. And this tool was a type of locking pliers, and it would clamp down on that copper pipe. And when it punctured the copper pipe, we had our gauge port we could hook up right here. So all I had to do was when this equipment was moved out of the way, I would simply clamp down, lock into it, hook my hose up here, and start recovering refrigerant. If this is the method you're going to use, I strongly recommend that you practice this on some regular copper first, making sure that you get the right amount of tension. Just some old pieces of copper so you can practice. There it's too loose, but sometimes you put it where it's too tight and it crushes the copper, and this little rubber seal doesn't make a good connection. The very first time I did this, I clamped down on that copper, had it too tight, it bowed the copper, pinching it, and it blew all the refrigerant out. Now, if that happens, it's simply an accident. If you don't do it on purpose, it's an accident. It's okay, you're not gonna get fined. What you wanna do is vacate the area immediately. Evacuate, get away from that area. Refrigerant displaces oxygen, so if it gets in your lungs, it's going to make it very difficult to breathe, as well as who knows how many other health effects from breathing in a chemical. So if that happens, the refrigerant starts shooting out, oil's coming out, just get away from it. Move completely away from it, evacuate the area so that you're not breathing in that chemical, especially if it's in an enclosed area. If you're in an enclosed spot in a shop inside of a building where that refrigerant can't be blown away by the wind, it's going to be much, much more of an issue. But this tool was really cool because it would really speed that up. So when I was on the job, instead of doing all that brazing because we didn't have this cool little connections back then, I had this tool that I could just latch this on and start recovering. So I'm doing my other prep work for my new install. I can go ahead and recover the refrigerant out of this system. So when I took it back to the shop, nobody else had to worry about it. Now the great news about this is if you're just getting started and you want to practice doing recovery, most every shop across the country has this equipment sitting there in the shop. And there's a huge arguments on 
whose responsibility it is to recover that refrigerant, but companies have this and they need to have the records of recovered refrigerant. So a great way to get started doing recovery is volunteering your time to recover equipment from shops from their scrap pile. Once you start recovering that re refrigerant, they have a record of the refrigerant they recovered and it gives you some really great practice without having to deal with anybody's actual pieces of equipment on that customer's unit. It's a great way to start. Now let's talk about these line taps. These are old school ways, but if you had a situation where you had a type one appliance, or if you had a pump down like this and you didn't have any of the other methods, this is what we used to do. Again, type one appliances don't have any service ports at all. So back in the day, we had these things called line taps. They worked with type one appliances, or if we had to do a pump down and we wanted to recover from the backside. We had multiple different sizes of these that we'd use, and the box said what sizes. For example, this red box here, it had a size of half inch and five eighths. The copper that we have is three eighths, so we're gonna use this box that says one quarter, five sixteenths, and also three eighths. So it worked for several different sizes. The part that's gonna go around the copper is right here, and as we had smaller and smaller sizes, we had these little adapters that we used. So if we're gonna use quarter inch copper, I would use the thickest adapter, and that would fit right inside of my bottom piece, and notice how it adapted and made it where it would take up less space. And if we had the 5 16 I would use the smaller adapter. And But we're using a 3 8 so we don't need the adapter at all. So what's cool about this is it has this little piece of rubber right here. So we're gonna clamp this around our copper, but what we have to do is somehow puncture it so it makes a connection. If I just put it around that copper, nothing's gonna happen. Once we had this clamped down with this tool, we would put this little adapter piece right here into the end like so. And then we had the cap and the cap was built just right to where it would connect to that. And as we start threading this down, you'll see right there, we start to have this little needle coming out, that little needle points coming out. So if we continue to spin this, now you can really see that needle. So it's punctured all the way through. It's gonna puncture right through inside of this copper. Then what we have to do is we back this back off And now notice that needle disappeared. What it had done is it punctured the copper, then we take that little adapter out of the cap, and then we hook our gauge up to this port and we're ready to start recovering refrigerant. To show you what that's gonna look like, we'll go ahead and do the whole process on this copper. So we have that little rubber piece, we put our copper on. So we put it right around the copper, and this back side goes right on the back side of the copper like so. And then we're gonna use our little, these little Allen bolts, go right in on the sides. And this whole kit comes with an Allen wrench already. So we have a little Allen tool, just gonna get this one started. Then we'll get the Allen tool on the other side, get it started. Now that this is very tight all the way around, secured, it's now ready to start puncturing the copper. So we're gonna put a little adapter right here on the very top, just like so. And then we're gonna put a little cap on. And it stopped, and once it stops, we don't go anymore. I've had students before where they hook pliers to this and try to keep going, and if you keep going, all it's gonna do is bust the very top out of this cap. You don't wanna bust the top out of that cap, so that's gonna be an issue. But uh, we've now punctured through the copper. Don't know if we'll be able to see it, but there's a little needle that's pumped right through that copper. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this cap, and we'll see if that needle will back back off. Now you can see that needle disappeared, our little adapter's inside. Just gonna bust that loose. And now we have punctured through the copper, the needle has pulled back up, and we have our little Schrader there that's ready to go. So now we can hook our hoses up here and start recovering refrigerant. So if you see it takes a little bit of time, you're putting all these little pieces together, tightening everything down, but it's also very important to note that these were only for recovering refrigerant. A lot of people would put these line taps on and then try to leave them on the system. And they are notorious for leaking. That little rubber gasket's only meant for a temporary seal. It's a very 
thin piece of rubber right here, so it doesn't last very long and doesn't do very well. Many times I've been to calls where the system was completely out of refrigerant. Somebody put the line tap on there and left it thinking it was gonna do its job. Now let's compare all that process to our tool. We have the groove, the bottom piece of the groove of the tool. We're gonna put it right there. And then we just simply clamp down. Boom, now we've punctured it. And also we're ready to recover refrigerant all in one fatal swoop. So there you have it, three different ways of recovering equipment from a pump down and two different ways of recovering equipment from a type one appliances with no service ports.